Hey Danny, how are you doing today? Oh, hey Trevor, I'm doing pretty good today. So, uh, what are we going to be looking at in this model car video? Well, I'm really glad you asked that question. Today I thought I'd do something that no one is talking about on the internet, and I know that because I looked it up, <laughs> and that is the little tiny 125th scale model car batteries. Now, I know it's just such a little teeny part. No one ever really thinks like, what are these things, right? It's just like, oh, I got a car battery. Okay, I'll just stick that, clean it up, stick it on the tape, paint it, you know, put the buttons on, drop it in, you know, and then it's out of sight, out of mind. It's just every, every model car has a battery molded in it or comes with a, a loose one. But I've got a big bag of parts and I'm trying to do that garage detail uh, diorama thing and you know, I just found this this bag of batteries that was in a parts box. Well, I, I had to sort them out, of course. And, you know, wh what are they? So, in this video today, I actually did a bit of research. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and I found all these uh, matchups from the real batteries to the model car batteries that I have. So, Danny, why don't we just go on down to the bench and take a look at these neat little car batteries. Here we have a collection of all these different model car batteries that I found in my spare parts box. So Danny, these batteries are all unique and different as you can see. And uh, what we can do is we can go over them and try to figure out what they are. Now I have done a bit of web research and I actually did find names and numbers and even some dates just to hook all these model car batteries so that we know what they are in the real world. Here we have the first battery in our investigation here, and what this one came from was the AMT slash Lindbergh slash round two once again, 1934 Ford pickup truck. This battery is actually the 1933 to 1937 Ford S2LF or slash FL battery. And just like as you can see here, we have the terminals for positive and negative at two opposite end points of these batteries. And actually, as you can see, we've got one molded in yellow, one in red, and one in white. So let's take a look at this red one, because somebody uh, actually painted the top silver. Now this is incorrect to the real battery, as we saw in that little title card. But what you can see here, this is recording very nicely actually, <laughs> is you've got two posts for positive and negative, and they're on opposite ends of the battery. And then you have these little plates that are all interlocked. This is almost like a in series sort of thing. So you'd have, you know, at the start here, like a positive jumping to a positive and a negative crossing over to a negative and everything. These batteries are really quite unique. And uh, as you saw in the title card, they're actually painted black. And the only thing that is, um, not black or semi-gloss black or whatever it is, are those little metal gates. Those, of course, would be lead, I do believe. And they do connect up all the power on this amazing Ford battery. Now, I do have three here, so that's kind of nice. They're all from the original kits, but it does give you a little bit more insight into what these things are, other than just, you know, little squares or rectangles, plastic rectangles with, you know, dots on the top. Now our next battery that we're going to look at here is actually a Mopar battery, Chrysler Corporation of course. This is the Mopar SG27MA. And here we've got our terminals up on the top, and they are sitting in these little tiny uh, rectangles. Now this is a refillable battery, so it's got the six caps sitting up top. This battery was used from 1959 to 1964. One thing about it, when they're molding these batteries, they're actually not perfectly rectangular on the sides. They're actually, uh, how do you, trapezoid I guess it is, where this widens out a little at the bottom. And then if you turn it this way, you'll also note that it does the same thing, widens out here. Now normally these batteries would be perfectly square and perfectly up and down, vertical and of course horizontal. But when you're dealing with plastic model kits, you have to release these out of the mold 
And that's why they have that slight taper, so they'll be able to come out. Here we have three identical batteries. Now somebody has painted these gold, for whatever reason. They were molded on a yellow parts tree. Now these batteries are the Mopar batteries that came in and replaced the SG27MAs. These are 1965 to 1968 Mopar SG27MEs. Now what makes it different? Well, a few things, as we can see. Uh, now, I'm not really sure why these batteries, this one is bigger like this compared to these. I'm not sure how accurate that is. But if it is accurate, you can see the replacement uh, is a lot smaller. But what's really unique about this is, here we have the, the buttons for refilling the battery. They're uh, one, two, three, of course, and then there's a, a gap right in here, sort of split, and then one, two, three, whereas on the earlier battery, they were all side by side in a nice long row. So that's what makes them different. But again, all these batteries are painted in that uh, semi-gloss satin black or even gloss black. And the only thing really painted that is different are the caps. And the posts, of course, would be painted with uh, a lead color or a steel color, I guess, in this case, because that's where your battery terminals are going to hook up to. Now here we have a GM battery, an AC Delco, or Delco. What makes this one really nice is you can see the fancy Delco lettering stamped in on the top, and it's also got the battery cables that are molded in place and, you know, just bent at a 90 degree off the battery, which really they would kind of not be bent 90 degrees, it would flow out. But these are uh, the type of battery you would find in like a 68 Camaro or whatever. And these are Delco SR59s from 1967 to 1972. So it is quite possible that this sort of Delco battery might have even been in my 72 Oldsmobile, with one exception, is that the Oldsmobile battery was side-mounted, so the battery terminals would be on this side instead of on the top like this one is. Again, these batteries are painted with black, and then the little caps are a different color. But this is sort of like that Mopar battery where you have the refill terminals, or refill caps, pardon me, all in a row up top, and then the terminals above those. Now, the next type of battery that I actually have are these, and it really took me a while to figure out what they are, because... There's so much going on on the tops of these things. Uh, lots of little dots and buttons and little braces and everything, as you can see here. And they did not make any sense because most of the batteries I've ever seen in my life are like this Mopar one. And uh, that's, you know, your typical uh, refill caps and the terminals and all the rest of that stuff. So, I mean, these are very familiar to me. Same with the Delco. And, you know, like the old antique Ford, I mean, it's, whoops, it's a lot older, of course, sort of looks similar to these, but, uh, you know, we're kind of familiar with even these vintage Ford ones, because you see them in museums and all that sort of thing, but these ones were a real mystery. I wasn't even sure if I was looking at a battery at first, but I finally located what they are on the web, and these are European batteries, so I... I don't know where I got these, because these were in a parts box that somebody traded at the hobby shop or whatever that was, so I don't even know where they got them. But these are SG24Ps. These are for European cars. Actually, they're really you really find them in Italian cars. So that's what I mean. Like, where did these come from, and why do I have two? So this kind of battery is sitting in... Alfa Romeos, Ferraris, Fiat's, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, and the Spanish-built Pegaso. And like I said, I mean, they, they look so odd. They're, it almost it's like a cooler or something. But like the uh, the illustration there, or that the picture showed before, actually, let's can't really see the white too well. What these are is you can actually, the terminal pegs, you can rotate in across the, the uh, different corner points, which is really odd. So you could have your positive and negative here, or you could have your 
negative and a positive there, or, you know, completely upside down, positive and negative. So what we're really looking at is there are, there's uh, little metal straps that go from here to here and here to here. And then you've got your terminals there and there. And then you've got down here a strap and a strap, and then a strap and a strap and a strap and a strap. So you got five of these straps that are crossing over. Actually, I think I might be a little bit off on the terminals, but I do know that you can reverse them from new, whatever. It, it's really odd. These are really odd batteries. And then right down the center here, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are all your filling caps. So again, these are painted in the gloss black, but uh, on those little things, you, you'd paint silver across there, silver from that point to that point, that point to that point, the, and then the two silver dots here for your terminals. And then these would be like a green or a black or a red, not black, well, maybe, and red or yellow even, just so you know where the refill caps are for the batteries. So again, very weird, but you know, like how they're molded here, the top almost looks like a cooler lid. <laughs> and then there's a lot of flash on these and, and uh, mold marks. So it's all like lumpy right on this side. Don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, yeah okay, maybe... Yeah, see there? It, it's like there's this piece plopping out and everything. Both of these are the same. They're really poorly molded, except for the top looks nice. And then underneath they're hollow. If you wanted to, you could put a, a flat card across there and just make these perfectly square. But you're going to need to take your file and everything. My sample paper block, I'll use that. And just square this up, because, boy, that's quite disturbing. But anyway, these ones are from Italy. So Danny, now that we've identified what these batteries are, I am going to go off camera and clean them all up so they look nice. So there's no like part separation marks from the uh, the sprue to the battery or any of that. They'll all end up looking smooth. I'll do a good job on them. Uh, now, there's only one thing I want to add to this, which is kind of sad. A lot of these real world batteries had Ford, you know, stamped on the side or Mopar or GM or something like that, or even a, a decal on there, maybe, you know, like a Canadian Tire battery or, a, um, you know, Fomoco or Mopar or GM AC Delco, you know, something like that. But none of these have them. They're pretty slab sided. And it's probably because these would be glued down in between like the fender well and, you know, whatever. So you wouldn't really see too much of them. So that's sort of the shameful part of this, that they're not accurate in that regard. But, you know, maybe I can find something in the decal box that, you know, has something there. That's another sort of thing. Who makes what? When you when you get one of those decal sheets, Danny, and it's all sponsors, what are all these sponsors really making? Like Bell Helmets. Do they only make helmets? Do they make some other things? Like, you really have to do your research, Google everything, and uh, just find and, and see what you're looking for. Like all those images of the batteries that I was using as chapter marks, those all had to be, uh, you know, researched. I had to do a lot of digging to find those. Luckily, I did find a site that lists all the old batteries, so that's not bad. I think I'll leave it in the link in the description below. So anyway, Danny, I will clean these up, and then I'm going to paint them all in the uh, gloss black color. Do it all at once, because, I mean, really, these are so tiny, right? Like, here's my finger. <laughs> you know, so we'll make them look good. Let's go out, Danny, and let's get these things together. Okay, Trevor, it sounds good. Here we have our collection of batteries after painting on the Tremclad semi-gloss black paint. As you can see, these do look really nice. There's a lot of uh, light glare and everything coming off. It's giving the uh, batteries that kind of white outline on the top. That's not really what we're seeing here. This is all just black. But again, these do look pretty nice. So all that's really left to do on these is to paint on the metal straps that are linking up the terminal posts and everything, and then uh, painting those little filler caps different colors. So 
I might just paint them all red. I'm not too sure. See how it goes. Take a look at that right now. And here's our car batteries with the extra details painted on top of them. We have the SG24Ps for the Italian cars like the Alphas and the Spanish Pegaso. And then here we have our 1934 Ford S2LF FLs. And then here we've got our 1965-68 Mopar SG24MEs and our 1959-64 Mopar SG24MA battery. And then wrapping it up with our 64-72 Delco SR59. Now what I used for the red on here was Chevy Engine Red. And I think it basically matches the engine red or the red buttons on top of the cars for refilling our fluids in there. I also added in one red wire on here for the positive for our AC Delco battery. And of course the negative would be a black wire, so I didn't actually paint that. Although to be uh, truthful, I should really paint it sort of a almost black gray, like a really, really dark charcoal. Again, I think these do look quite nice. Now there are no red terminal caps on the six volt Ford batteries, but there are on all the other 12 volt batteries that we've got here. So what I wanna do is give these a couple of days to dry up, and then I will remove them from the black painted background here, and uh, we can see what they look like just standing there on their own. Here we have all our batteries done, Danny. What do you think of those great gems? Those look pretty awesome. Goes to show what a little time and patience can do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I didn't get to shave for it. it it's kind of late at night, but I've been meaning to do this for a little while and then I had other things going on in life and now I've finally been able to to get down and film this video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it helps out either in when you're building model cars, just so you, you know, kind of stop and think like, what is that battery in the 1958 AMT Chevy kit, for example, or, or you know, the, the 1934 Ford pickup truck, or like, where do those Italian batteries come from, you know, and what are they? What do they match up with? You know, maybe you start to think about some of the model car parts, which, you know, a lot of us really don't think about it. The starter's a starter, we glue it in, the battery just goes in here in the car, everything else. But now you've got something to think. I gave you something to think about. <laughs> I don't know if it's, you know, how involved you're gonna get with this thought in your life, but at any rate, it is kind of nice. And I can always use these batteries, put them on a shelf or, uh, you know, in my diorama, put them in the back of the pickup truck or whatever. So again, I really hope this ended up helping you. And, uh, I love making these tips and text videos, so I'm looking forward to doing the next one. It's going to be a real good one. So until then, everybody, from me and Danny the dog, we'll see you on the next Model Kit Adventure.